Good morning, family. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's your brother, Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. Soul Winners with a Z dot O-R-G. Live dot Soul Winners with a Z dot O-R-G. That website, live dot Soul Winners with a Z dot O-R-G, is like a my online church system. Amen. It has a live chat, a live interactive Bible where you could read along with us over there. Of course, you'll see the video. Amen. And you'll... Um, be able to connect with me via subscription on the podcast or on the YouTube page. So it's a good website and it's distraction free. It's like no distractions over there. If you're with me on social media, you already know there's going to be pop ups, um, things that are going to distract you. Amen. Um, and also, there's no distractions on the radio. So when is with a Z.org, you're going to be listening to audio only, or you can slide over to the live stream tab on the website and you can watch from there as well. So God bless you. Welcome back. And thank you so much for going going the, the distance and waking up with me very right early in the morning um, to get the word of God. Some people are early birds, not me. Amen. I'm a night owl by nature, naturally, but supernaturally, I'm a, I'm a morning, how you call that, uh, early bird. So today I'm calling this one, Be Like God. Be Like God. Now this, this might sound... Like a spiritualism type of morning devo, or it might sound like, oh, that's impossible, or it might sound new age to you, but be like God is literally, literally in the scriptures for you and for me to be like God. Amen. If you um, follow me, you know, on every Fridays, I do, on Fridays, I do a, a version of the morning devo called Authentic Imitationology. And that was given to me by God. Those two words, amen, I know they're words that we use, but when you put them together, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. So I had to ask the Lord, why are you giving me authentic, which is something that is, you know, real and it's by itself and uh, imitationology, which is something that you imitate. And then he took me to these scriptures um, that say we're supposed to be like God. We're supposed to be like him. Follow me as I follow Christ. Um, Be like God. Amen. So that's what the Fridays are like. We um, try to imitate the most successful person who has ever lived on the planet, the Lord Jesus. Amen. And therefore, it confirmed in my heart that, yes, we're supposed to be like God. We're not God. That's obvious. I don't even know if I have to remind anybody of not being perfect. We're not perfect like God. His ways are not like our ways. His thoughts are not like our thoughts. But you get what I'm talking about, right? So it would be best to have a transformed, renewed mind and not think like unbelievers. Because if you're not transformed and if your mind is not renewed, you're going to be thinking the old way. You're going to be thinking like unbelievers. But when you have a transformed mind, a renewed heart, a renewed spirit, amen, a renewed mindset, you're going to start thinking differently. Amen. We're going to be in Ephesians chapter number 4, verses 17 to 24. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 to 24 today on the Morning Devo. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, you already know. Don't hesitate to leave it on the live chat. That's what we're here for. Amen. We're here to communicate. This is not just a one-way dialogue. This is a conversation. Amen. And if you know, you know. If this is your first time on the Morning Devo, welcome. Amen. I want to personally welcome you to the morning devo this is not a mistake you didn't it was not happenstance i don't have uh robots or bots online to draw you to the morning devo you were drawn by holy spirit god amen because the bible says holy spirit draws draws amen people to himself jesus draws people to himself when the son of man is lifted up all men will be drawn unto him the father knows who's He's calling, who he's calling, amen? And if you're one of those whosoever's who call upon the name of the Lord to be saved, welcome to the family of God, amen? It's a forever family. It's an eternal family. Be like God today in the morning, Diva. We're going to pray first. After we pray, we'll share this out for like 60 seconds, and then we come back on the other side of the 60, amen? We'll get right into it, amen? So are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go for it. Father, I thank you. Thank you so much for your time, your eternal time that you have placed in our hearts for every single person who believes and every single person who receives your word as truth. We thank you, Lord God, that you have opened our eyes, opened our ears to the truth of the gospel through your Holy Spirit. 
the Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord God, for guiding us, guarding us, protecting us from the wiles of the enemy, for renewing our mind, renewing our heart, giving us a fresh start today. Thank you, Lord God, that you said if you those who we lay hands, right, shall be not saved only, but cured from any disease. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover in the name of Jesus. I pray that for every single person. You could literally, literally, thank you, Lord God, for your spirit. You could literally take some oil and they're representing the, the oil of the God of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. And anoint your head right now for the renewed mind, um, for a restored body. Amen. For health to your body, strength to your bones. We get that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We get that from you, from your Holy Spirit, from the power of God, his word, your word, Lord God, your love, your grace, your mercy, your salvation power, your resurrection power. The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is available to every one of your children. Thank you, Lord God, for that power, authority. Thank you, Lord God, for acknowledging us as your children as receiving us into the adopted family of God for those who are Gentiles like myself, those who are outside of um, the nation of Israel and your people. Thank you, Lord God, for guiding us through and keeping us safe in this world and this time. I pray this by faith, knowing that you hear these prayers. With I pray with thanksgiving because I know without you, we cannot do anything. But with you, we could do all things through Christ Jesus, who gives us the strength to get it done. In Jesus' name, we pray this by faith. And those who agree, we say amen. Amen. So let's go for it. Could take 60 seconds. Help me share this out. When we come back on the other side of those 60 seconds, we'll get right into Ephesians chapter number 4, verses 17 to 24. I'll be right back. back let's go for it let's see what the word of god has for us today amen i know you hear me say that every single pretty much every single day it's because the word of god is what brings us freedom liberty it brings life it brings clarity amen it brings understanding and it brings salvation the word of god when you hear the gospel you receive the gospel message of the lord jesus christ get ready for an eternal salvation Amen. We're saved from the wrath of God because of God's word. And how would anybody hear the word of God if it wasn't for a preacher? Someone who presented the gospel, presented the word of God. Amen. That's why I love to crack open the scriptures, get into the word of God for myself so I can have an understanding. Amen. Of what the gospel is saying, what Holy Spirit is speaking. Amen. And I invite you and encourage you to do the same. Because if you just follow popular teachings, you're going to be led astray. There's a lot of popular preachers who are doing popular preachings um, that are not even biblically accurate. So the safest way to stay biblically accurate is to go to the word of God. I mean, it's a no brainer, but I just need to remind you of that. We could literally, literally go to the word of God for ourselves to see what Holy Spirit would teach us and guide us through. He leads us to all truth. He doesn't lead us into error. If you follow me, I might go into some areas that I might be in error if I'm not being guided by Holy Spirit or if I'm just having an off day and I'm just not, I could be in the wrong scripture sometimes, <laughs> amen, um, and not realizing it. But when we're in the scriptures together, amen, 
We're going to get revelation. Amen. We're going to get transmitted to our own ideas. We're going to be now in the mind of God. Amen. His word is his will. His will is his word. Amen. If you ever want to meet, read the mind of God, read his word. That is his mindset. Amen. So let's go for it. Let me get this ready for the screen. For those people who are listening on the podcast, on the radio, amen. No worries. We're going to read it word for word what we're seeing on the screen because I don't leave nobody. I'm in the dark on any of these things. Amen. Let's go for it. Be like God. Be like God. I, I like the way it sounds. It's a little intimidating to me, though, this title, because I'm like, what? I got to be like God? Yes, we can. When you have Holy Spirit inside of you, you have union with Christ. You can't get any closer. Amen. I know people say, I got to get close to, closer to God. I need a long time with God. You are always with God, with God if you're born again. <laughs> I tell you right now, God is always with you if you're born again. Amen. There's never a day that God leaves you alone. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Cherie, God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo, my sister. Brother Frank, God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Bless you. Good morning. So let's go for it. Be like God. Ephesians chapter number four. Let's get right into it because I know this title, um, if you, if we don't get to the scriptures, it could throw a lot of people off. But this is what Ephesians chapter number 4, 17 to 24 says. With the Lord's authority, I say this. Live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. We see that in the society, unfortunately, today. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because... They have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. If you don't see that in the time we're living today, uh, I can't help you. Like you're you're asleep. We see this all over the script, all over the world. Amen. And the scripture is talking about what's happening right now in real time in the kingdom of this world, the kingdom of darkness. They're in darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and they've hardened their hearts against them. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Amen. Now, now Apostle Paul is saying, that's them, that's not us. That is not what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Okay, what is corrupted by lust and deception? Let me help somebody who's born again and still calls themselves a sinner. If you're still calling yourself a sinner and you're born again, you're misunderstanding your identity in Christ. Apostle Paul says, since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from Jesus, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life. Your former way of life before Christ was a sinner. You were bound by sin. You were trapped in sin. You were slave to sin. And you were on the darkest side of eternity. But you can throw that off now. You're born again. Hallelujah. You're born again. Throw that sinful nature off and your former way of life, which is corrupted by what? Lust and deception. Instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, your new nature created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. When you're righteous and holy, like God says we are, amen, We are a being like God because he's righteous and holy. Nando, God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So this is not, I didn't make this title up. I literally saw it in the scriptures and that scripture popped out at me. Created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Really nothing that I could do to be this way except trust in God's word and accept my identity in Christ. And once I do that, I'm being like God. Because Jesus is God. I hope you get what I'm saying. I know it sounds like, no, that's impossible. There's no way. Well, the word of God speaks to us. Amen. 
the apostle Paul was filled, Holy Spirit filled, and he wrote down what Holy Spirit uh, guided him to write, instructed him to write. So he wrote it. I believe it. Amen. I might not understand it all. I say this all the time. I'm not going to understand everything in the scriptures. What about you? I don't think anybody on this side of eternity is going to understand everything that the scriptures hands out our way. Amen. Holy Spirit, God is guiding us and teaching us. Amen. Some people say it's a process. I believe once you're born again, you have the wholeness of the Holy Spirit. You don't have just some of the Holy Spirit. But I really don't think we have the full understanding of the scriptures. Amen. So I know a lot of people like to say we're in a process. I'm not being processed. I'm not like processed meat or processed food or anything like that. Um, My entire self was saved by a holy, righteous God. And when he says you're holy and righteous, guess what you are? You're holy and righteous. So you're, you're being like God. Amen. It's not a process to become like God. You are already like God. Holy Spirit lives inside of you. So, oh, you know, Sam, I'm not perfect. Okay, I understand that. But the perfect one lives within us. So there's no excuse for us to like get off on the deep end. Amen. Some people actually think, and I heard it with my own ears, that Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Then when you sin, he leaves. And then you got to fill yourself again with Holy Spirit God. And then once you mess up again, he leaves. I don't know. Somebody needs to show me that in the scriptures. It's a popular teaching, but it's not in the Bible. Amen. And um, if you find it to learn. Amen. I've looked... When I hear something like that, I look into it myself. And if I don't find it, I'm like, well, where did this come from? And I start asking questions, and then it's like crickets. Like the crickets you're hearing behind me, amen, which I got to annihilate again. I put, I sprayed my yard in the, in the back of the studio, and I'm like, why am I still hearing crickets? That's because they come, they came back in droves. They realized that the, the poison that I put out was washed away probably by the rain. So your brother's going to be out there again very, real soon. You know, wipe them out. I know a lot of people say, don't kill the crickets. You're not supposed to kill things like that. But uh, um, they're annoying. I can hear it in the background, and it's very distracting. Amen? So be like God. Be like God. Another scripture I have for you. I can find it real quick. Romans chapter 12, verse number 2. Because the Bible says in Ephesians 4, right, that we just read, that we're supposed to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its what? Deceitful desires and be made new. The old self was in the dark, right? We was in the dark and our mind and our hearts were hard and our mindset was closed to the things of God. And we were like, nah, that can't be. I know at least for me, before Christ rescued me and saved me and transformed me, renewed me, restored me, redeemed me. Amen. He's the God of the re. He will redo things. Amen. When he found me where I was and woke me up, I looked at sin differently immediately. I was like, wait. And it's like I woke up out of a bad dream. My life was like a bad dream. Then I woke up. He woke me up. He says, "Um, you're sinning. Because I never realized I was sinning. People used to come up to me and say, you are right. Because you, you know, you're, you're doing this, you're doing that. You know, your wife left you. You're living with a girl. Are you all right? And I said, look at people right in their face and say, yeah, what, what's going on? What's wrong? Like, I didn't, you couldn't tell me I was doing something wrong because I was already bound. My heart was hardened and my mind was closed. I was this person before Jesus rescued me. But in Romans chapter 12, verse number two, amen. And that's why on the ministry, Soul Winners, amen, I keep this like a slogan, um, Join the movement and start Romans 12-ing it today. And when I say Romans 12-ing it, I mean Romans chapter 12, verse number 2, where the Bible says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. This world has a pattern. You know it. I know it. This world has a pattern. It makes it, it makes sin look very pretty. It makes bad good. It makes good bad. Do all you can, can all you get, get all you can, all that stuff. Amen? That's what the world offers. But the word of God says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because what happens here will start coming out of here. And what comes out of here will start um, applying in our own lives. We'll follow after what we say instead of following after what God says. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, 
and perfect will. When you're following the will of God, you're being like God. When your desires, you realize your desires are changing or you, they change once you got born again. You don't want to do what you used to do. Cravings will come. Uh, the old nature, the flesh will try to challenge our new mindset. But you know what I mean. You're not just waking up ready to go sin. Now you have a fight in your hands. Now you can literally say no to the things that used to always get you trapped, that will always trip you over, that will always get you in trouble. Now you can literally say to those sins, nah, not today. And it's not really the devil. It's your own evil, sinful desire. My own evil, sinful desires want to come against my identity, want to come against the word over my life, wants to come against my family, wants to come against my children, my marriage. Amen. Wants to come against uh, my job, my organization, wants to come against my ministry, wants to come against my church. The sinful nature is a bad, bad space, right? The flesh is a monster. I even wrote a book about it. It's called The Flesh is a Monster. Look it up on Amazon. It's a small book. You can read it in, in, in an hour, 15 minutes, depending on how fast you read. And study it out. Study it out. I put the scriptures in there to back it up. Amen. The flesh is a monster. It has its own way of living and it's corrupt and it's full of all deceit and lust. We read it in Ephesians chapter four. Amen. When I look at that, I'm like, yeah, that's the flesh. It's not Holy Spirit God. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Whatever happens to righteousness and holiness, right? Um, where, where are those preachers at? Amen. Um, we're living in a society um, that even preachers are challenged, especially if they have a big platform, they're challenged to speak on sin. I literally know a situation of a church that haven't heard the gospel message concerning sin in over a decade. Amen. But praise God, God sent them a minister, amen, to remind them that about that part of the gospel. I literally know these this situation. Amen. And I'm like, what? Over a decade? So there's no there's no um secret to why what was happening to that congregation was happening. Amen. We can't have just good news without the bad news. The bad news is without Christ, we are setting ourselves up for an eternal separation from God the Father, because we rejected God the Son and we don't have God Holy Spirit. But the opposite applies. You receive the gospel message. Amen. Jesus will save you, rescue you, forgive you for all your sins, transform you, renew you, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And Holy Spirit will remind you of the word over your life, your identity. Amen. Who you are. He will empower you to lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. Amen. And you will be renewed and restored in your mind. Amen. Your heart will be, it's like a supernatural transplant. The old deceitful, lustful heart will be replaced with the heart of God. And our desires will be replaced with God's desires. Be like God. It's in the scriptures. Amen. I know it sounds like, wow, can it really be? And I'm not talking about spiritism. I'm not talking about what the Mormons say, that we become like God and Jesus became a God. And I'm not talking about none of that. That's not biblical. I'm talking about what we rest read in Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. We take it from there. We take the word for what the word is. And who's the living word of God? The Lord Jesus. And who is Jesus? God manifest in the flesh. He came in the form of a man named Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. The Messiah, the Mashiach, Mashiach Magid, Yeshua HaMashiach, right? We know him as the Lord, as the Savior. Amen. As our Lord and our Savior, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. The wonderful Prince, uh, Prince of Peace, wonderful Counselor. Amen. Almighty God came in the form of a man. And then he showed us when he was here on this planet, three and a half year ministry was on the earth for 33 and a half years. Amen. He showed us how to live a righteous, holy life in real time. Amen. He didn't hold back anything. He showed up. Amen. And gave his all, even to the point of putting himself on the cross. Nobody forced him to do what he did. No one had power over him to force him on that cross. No, he laid down his life for us. God demonstrated his own love in this, that while we were still haters of God, sinners, 
he still, regardless, he still died for us. So that way we could have a chance um, to be restored. We'll forgive you for your sin, ladies and gentlemen. He forgave me for my sins. He'll forgive you for your sins. And all my brothers and sisters could testify that once he did that, our eyes were open to a new life. Our hearts were not hardened anymore. Don't let preachers tell you that your heart is still full of lust and deceit and all kind of wickedness. That was the old heart. We're talking about the new heart. Amen. The heart of Christ. Uh, the heart of God is living and breathing and pumping new fresh blood. Amen. <clears throat> Our mind is renewed. Excuse me. <clears throat> Our mind is renewed. We're redeemed, man. We are the redeemed. All the redeemed of the Lord say so. <clears throat> Got that frog. It's early in the morning. <clears throat> but we have what we need <clears throat> to do what God calls us to do. We have everything that we need to live this life out <clears throat> with godliness and righteousness. Amen. God is faithful. He's good to his word, for his word. Amen. We have to be transformed. <clears throat> we have to be renewed in our minds. And we must not think like unbelievers think. <clears throat> and we got it. We got one another. That's why I always say, let's pray for one another. <clears throat> let's not say we're going to pray and then never show up in prayer. Amen. Never present each other. Um, to the Lamb of God, to hold, through the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Let's be like God. Ephesians chapter number four. Read that whole chapter for yourself so you can see that that title is actually in the scriptures. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. God bless you all. God keep you all. Remember always, always remember this, that God is good. Peace. <laughs>